<clears throat> it's the Weeb Warrior Tolren. Finally, we're getting around to this guy. I'm pretty sure he's some kind of like up close and personal melee dude. So we'll dash all the way up here to this cover. So I actually tried to record this a couple times already. But due to some issues, I haven't been able to. People with a removable hard drive know the struggle. Okay. So Gray probably went over to this left side. Lockwood is probably going to do like a spray and pray. Maybe he tries to hit me with a bullet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that should be pretty good. Uh, there's a very little likelihood of him dashing out of there, so I'm pretty safe to just go for the hit. Oh, that's a full action, isn't it? Can you keep up? So he's probably gonna be stuck there. Luckily for me. He's caught the scent. Get him. Great, got a good hit in. So there's three people over here, and there's probably gonna be the Blackburn. Where's Blackburn at? Blackburn has not yet shown himself. Nice double hit. Oh, Blackburn's way on the other side with no cover. He's going to take a lot of damage, I think, for next turn. Okay, they're all grouped up here. We've got me and what's-her-face, Asuna. This is going to be a pretty good hit. Something like that into the hit here. Position a little bit so if anyone dashes behind this cover, I can still hit them. No, actually, it's not going to work. And I'll just try and chase down Lockwood if I can. Man, this is this is going pretty stellar. Turn three, already in the lead. All right, let's go. go to sleep. So in doing so, and having a couple of failed recordings as is, there's the dash. Was fairly expecting that. Um, I did get a chance to play him a little bit, so I'm not going to this character completely blind. In essence, he has a very close range of melee, a bit of a shield a uh, long range like dagger hit and a dash and a ult, uh, dashing ult you know it's, it's kind of unfortunate like i feel like i'm seeing the the pattern and that they're just ugh, got hit by that damn thing i'm seeing a pattern emerge from their characters from their design characters because like it feels like every character is kind of like every character like tolren is kind of designed like this The kind of idea where it's like you have your close on your melee with like a kind of a, a little bit of a twist, you know, on Asana, it's like a it's like a pizza pizza shape, a pizza cut out of a pizza shape. And then, you know, you have Tolren and then you have like a what's his face? The the sword guy. It's kind of unfortunate that a dash right in front of him instead of behind him. But it will. Oh, and Lockwood didn't da He didn't warp out. I didn't go for him because I was totally expecting him to warp out of there because he was surrounded by three people. He's actually probably going to survive this now. I'm even going to get hit by this stupid thing. That was a huge mistake. And he got a huge letter rip off. Oh no. Ah, Antwe. That's not good. No, <laughs> no, we were in the lead. What happened? Now we're behind. Oh, just I can just barely get both of them. And I can hit him here. I can, I can aim this anywhere, which is neat. It doesn't even need to be within the same, uh, or maybe it does. I don't know. I'll just keep chasing down Lockwood, or not Lockwood, Blackburn. My resolve cannot losing losing a team member that early is pretty unfortunate. Even if I did actually go for the hit on Lockwood, it still would not have actually done. It would have changed things a whole lot. But I do lose the opportunity for my dash, and he dashes out of here, unfortunately. And he's gonna hit me for a pretty big chunk of damage, and I'm gonna get hit for this big chunk of damage, and I am losing this game. We're just gonna fall apart no we went from being on top of the world to being entirely behind at least we get the kill on lockwood so he doesn't get another guaranteed action that's like a huge thing in like the importance of aiming your abilities correctly i just straight about to dash out of here don't i although i'm just kind of delaying the inevitable i'll get this guaranteed hit off and then just die i guess <laughs> That's my only option right now. Uh, yeah. This is really unfortunate. 
I can't believe like Lockwood was able to turn that situation so damn well. That was kind of the thing. Like he took, I feel like he accepted the fact that he might actually die, and he just went for the biggest play possible that he could. And I'm still alive, which is really nice. That is really really good. He should have just gone for a regular. F oh no! Wait, how did that kill me? How did that kill? How? What? It. Did it. Was I standing in the great thing and then they and then they moved the drone away from me and then I got hit on the return flight? That's unfortunate. I'll go over here trying to kill uh stop Blackburn from going over here too much. I thought I already eh. Yep, that's unfortunate. I think we can still come back. Blackburn's pretty low. These two guys over here are doing pretty well. They should be able to focus down. Damn, I can't remember. Aurora. I don't see Aurora very much. I'm surprised people actually like pick playing Aurora like in casual play. Like why would you ever want to play a character like Aurora? The super weak frail support character. At least characters like Helio. At least I think his name is Helio. Yeah, at least characters like Helio and Celeste, they come with either like a good amount of utility slash tankiness or offensive respectively but just like aurora and um the electric dr manhattan guy they just seems like so weak and like uh, they would they would have a lot of power right in coordinated situations jeez that lock was getting off some big letter rips he is letting it rip man what is his damage at it's going to update after this turn, I guess. Yeah, this is unfortunate. I can go for the dash here if I want to, to try and get in on them, which is actually not a bad idea. I'm not even going to deal with Lockwood because he's totally going to ult here. He's probably going to ult like, somewhere over here, try and get, meet up with his teammates again. So I'm just going to... Oh, I can't even dash to him. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, that should be good enough. I'm gonna dash in. I'm gonna hit him with. I'm gonna hit both Blackburn and Gray with my uh, rushing steel, and then I'll be able to go for melee or potentially ult on the next turn as well. This is really good. We're coming back. We're coming back. It's not over, baby. It's not over. Uh, except Isidore. Died. Well, we have two kills lined up here. <laughs> Maybe two kills lined up here. Has Lockwood even died yet? Yeah, he died. Okay. He's at 293 damage. Crazy. That's just the result of two really good letter rips and like one. His traps have been really good too. I think I've fallen for like twice two of his traps already. He's got 100% ult. Oh, this is bad. Ah, and I used a time bank. It always feels so bad. Like when. That's both like the greatest thing and the worst thing about Atlas Reactor is that you have like no time to come with these plays. And if you're unfamiliar with the character you're playing and or the situation that you're in, it can be really difficult to be able to get off good plays off in such a short amount of time. And it feels almost like just kind of like just speaking my thoughts, not necessarily being right or anything like that, but it almost feels like kind of arbitrary because it's it's not necessarily a gosh, that was a really good ult. Oh my god, we're just getting annihilated. Yeah, we're just going to lose this 100%. It's too, long, it's too much. It almost feels arbitrary because it's not necessarily game difficulty or a player versus player difficulty. It's just kind of like that initial difficulty spike that you you just kind of are forced to overcome. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense because that exists in like literally every multiplayer game. But it seems like it's a little bit more punishing. Yeah, that's what it is. it's a little bit more punishing in a game like Atlas Re in a game like Atlas Reactor because your 15 seconds of action. Oh my gosh, he dashes out of it again. Because your 15 seconds of action time is going to be significantly less effective than the opponent's 15 seconds of action time if they are well well, uh, well aware of their character's limitations and the situation and the game plan that, that they need to execute. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Because, like, think about it in a game like Chess or Hearthstone. If you think about a game like Chess or Hearthstone, your punishment for... Lacking knowledge is, le le is a bit less punished because you have more time to think about it and come to this, like, a better, come back to a better, I 
you have more time to be able to reach your opponent's level of knowledge by just thinking it through as opposed to Atlas Ractor where you it's much more instinctual break, uh, instinctual based although the same could be said for any like shooter like um, Call of Duty CSGO even player on uh, Battlegrounds and MOBAs like Dota and League of Legends where there effectively is no thinking time to a varying degree anyway and uh, a really cool thing about League of Legends kind of go off on a rant here now that we just basically just lose <laughs> uh, in League of Legends, you, you actually, like, let's say, just throw out numbers there, like, out of 100% of a game, right, how much time do you think you spend actually directly interacting with another player outside of, like, some laning shenanigans, right? Like, in the actual moments in which you are facing off directly against an opposing player, like, in a fight, in a duel, in a you're seizing a tower, something like that, or fighting over a dragon, a baron, the, the time that that happens is actually really, really short. In between that, you have these lo these big periods of time where nothing is really happening, and you have that opportunity to kind of direct the game in the direction that you want to go. And that's also, that's a really big reason why I like League so much, is that even if you don't necessarily have the expertise or knowledge the opposing player has, you can still kind of overcome that gap a little bit by making better use of your time that's not spent facing directly off against another player, or just completely avoiding it entirely. Which is what uh, which is what a lot of team comps will do if you watch World or something like that, like uh, recently SKT, right? It it you can miss it, and this reward the scores okay there is you may misinterpret SKT as playing very or they are playing they are playing passively but they're not necessarily playing scared or uh you know not playing to their fullest potential when they're playing a scaling comp because the whole idea is that they want to try and force the game long and avoid the enemy as many as long as possible thus circumventing the opponent's advantage that they inherently have due to one their lead due to two the way they're playing and due to three because of the team competition and strategy that they're going for and that was a weird little ramp on this lost game but let's go to the next one <laughs> that was just absolutely garbage that was a terrible terrible match they lined us up and then knocked us down anyway all right chance number two i'm trying to do a little bit better this time i'm gonna just head with my team dash over to this stellar space try and stick around dr finn Grayson can go off to the right wall, go off to the left. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why someone's going way up here. But we'll figure it out. We're going up against Kaigen. A little bot. Helio. And Archer Chick. So Archer Chick is probably going to be my biggest target to try and kill. Uh, every time I go for my ability, I keep pressing six instead of eight. I'm a dummy. Let's make you more attractive. Taking emergency he didn't switch out, interestingly enough. I might have actually tried to go for the hit on him. If I knew he wasn't going to dash. No, we're so... She, did she try to go into the same space that I was? Punk. Okay, this doesn't really look that good. I'm just gonna dash out of here, hit Helio, and then follow him. Yeah, I'll hit he Helio, follow him. Oh, she went way over here. The whole point of me dashing out of here is because I don't want to get double hit by Helio, possibly Kaigen, and uh, Oz. Pretty good hit, pretty good hit. Ring, ring, <laughs> I love that skin. I'm totally not Mega Man. Well, I'm surprised he didn't actually go for his like laser beam thing. To try and double hit both of us. Kaigen didn't go for Kunai over here either. A lot of unexpected plays here. <laughs> I thought they would seriously try and take advantage of having two people lined up for them, but... It didn't at all. Okay, he was here. I can just barely hit him. Maybe I can hit her too? Yep, okay. That's definitely going for that then. I will try and chase her down and execute her. 
Kaigen's still off to the side. He may actually be around here going for the melee. Although, if he does go for a melee, it's going to be less effective because he doesn't have a proc on us. At least I don't think he does. I do have a Dr. Finn proc on me. Yeah. I think, anyway. Okay, no, no, no. I got, I got weakened by her. Man, that cat, the cat girl is getting a lot of damage off. Really nice. <laughs> and now I get the now I get the hit. They get the kunai one turn later than I thought it would, and get hit by Helio. Nice. Okay, damage. All right, but I am stuck here. No, no. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And what does she have? I don't even get to see her abilities if she's in stealth, which is unfortunate. I don't even get to chase her either. Oof, going to stealth is really good, isn't it? Kind of mess with my plan. So I'll try and chase Helio instead, because I kind of think that she's going to go and dash out, or warp out or something. Even though it's not, uh, there's not a lot of threat pressure on her, she still may want to try and just get out of the situation, recoup, uh, or reset rather. That's more or less what I think I'd do. Yeah, there it is. She went for her dash, not the warp, but still gets damage off. And I'm continuing to get beat up by people. At least I have one more guaranteed action, which is nice. Even though this is effectively a waste. It wasn't 100% guaranteed that she was going to dash. I went for just the play that I thought was going to work. Depending on uh, a fairly, li fairly high likelihood. I am in a bit of a trouble, though. I am in a bit of a trouble. I'm in a bit of trouble. I go for the heal. I'll continue chasing this guy. I'm pretty sure I have a, uh, the dash as well, so I can just um, I'll be able to chase him pretty far. Waste no strike. But a trick up my fin. Pop goes my bubble. So I get the shield. Aim for Helio to do his thing. Okay, it's on Kaigen, so it's not going to be that effective. I do get hit by Kaigen's uh, kunai from way over across the map. Gray misses. I'm not really sure what she was aiming at. Maybe he was. Maybe she was trying to predict the Helio teleport or something. Uh, so Helio is probably an ult, right? I forget what his ult is. Is it just the one that gives you a shield? So I'll just try and smack him in the face. Go here. And then see if I can chase him to wherever he may teleport to. I think if I were him, I'd use the ult. Because I'm pretty sure it gives him a pretty big shield. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Killing machine activated. Yeah. Huh, Kaigen didn't go for the kunai on me. That's totally what I was expecting. I may actually get another guaranteed action, which would be really good. It's like game winning if I get- Ah, oh, no, I'm dead. Damn it. No, I'm double dead. Damn. I thought I'd heal for a little bit more. Okay, so not, not such a great situation. Only got 123. No, no, no. I only got 118 damage off, and then died, and I took 222 damage. I wonder, like, like how like the more competitive players view damage received. Like, is that like a stat you want to try and bump up as much as possible? Is this does this even matter? Is damage received even a? <laughs> it is something you should take into consideration when trying to alter your play. Like, oh, like, I guess it kind of makes sense if you're playing something like Nyx. Like, you want your damage to received to be as low as possible. But what if you're playing a more like tankier kind of melee or kind of supporting character, right? Do you want your damage received to be as high as possible because that means other characters aren't getting that damage? Or is it like you're just putting yourself in an unreasonable amount of danger and getting punished for it? I wonder to what extent that is that matters. So he's probably going to go for this heal over here and I'll just hit him afterward.
can sleep on the job now. Hey, what gives? I've got you in my sights. Wonder if I should up my quality here. It seems a little bit, a little bit blurry. I'm afraid though that if I raise the the graphics too high, then it's actually going to affect uh, my recording and make it effectively unusable. Looks like did Helio just die there? Okay, I don't really have any other targets right now, so I'll just try and see if I can chase Oz with a dash and then go from there. Oh jeez, the CPU is the CPU is at sixty percent for Atlas Reactor. Yeah, I think I need to turn this graphics down. Unfortunately, which is weird because like I feel like my CPU is like actually kind of okay, but like <laughs> recording this game and like uh, some other games can be really difficult. At least in a high quality, that is. Okay, I'm probably not gonna be able to actually get any hits on him because he's gonna dash. Yeah, and it, it's definitely up. So he's probably going to go for it or else he's going to take like half his health and damage. Okay, whoa, yeah. Wait, no. <laughs> I was going to say my CPU lowered by 20% just by lowering the graphics setting, but that's not the case. It actually went up by 6. So I don't know. I mean, like, does raising the graphics even affect the CPU? I'm not that very computer savvy when it comes to hardware. I don't really know. Because I know there's a difference between CPU and GPU, right? Because, I mean, I I installed them. I built my own computer. <laughs> but I don't know to what extent raising the graphics setting actually affects CPU. I probably need to upgrade it relatively soon. I don't think my CPU is going to cut it if I want to, like, actually stream in a higher quality. Or not necessarily stream, but record, rather. I have plenty of memory, though. I have, like, all this stuff open. All these programs, and it's only at, like, 40%. <laughs> like, Audition, OB Studio, uh, Music Player, Chrome with a whole bunch of tabs open, uh, Task Manager, and last Atlas Reactor. Because I have, like, 16 gigabytes of RAM. I went overboard on RAM, but then went up underboard on CPU. Yeah, okay. This game is surprisingly boring. Not much is really happening. Maybe it's because like this map is so like big and dark that it feels like less exciting than a map like we, uh, we just played previously, which is a bit closer, a bit more action-packed, a bit more centered, a bit brighter. Who knows? I'll go ahead and raise this graphics one more time and then observe how the CPU changes. Still figuring this stuff out. That's the whole point why I call these uh, just like casual matches. But I'm not necessarily trying to go for, you know, uh, expert level analysis. Not that I do that in Gwent. <laughs> it's definitely just kind of whatever. Hanging out, chilling, talking, ranting, doing you know, whatever. While Atlas Reactor is playing in the background, more or less. I kind of want to expand this as well to something else. Like, <laughs> like, uh... I kind of want to get some like RuneScape content up because I play RuneScape for like an hour or two every day while you know doing something else like reading or catching up on news or watching a video. <laughs> and if I play so much RuneScape, I feel like you know maybe there's something I can contribute, some kind of interesting content that I could do. But it need like if I'm going to put any videos on this on this YouTube channel, it needs to be tactically minded or like some kind of tactics or strategy uh, angle. I don't feel like I can actually do that in old school RuneScape. Unless it was some kind of like PvP situation, but I like one, I'm not even good at PvP, and two, I just don't feel like there's like really anything I can do. If, if anything, it would be like a like examining the PvP strategy or something like that, or like the strategies that go into like PVMing or skilling or something like that. That could be interesting. That could actually be interesting, but I would have to uh, I would have to really really think about it and. 
it can't just be like, oh yeah, it's got, and we just got like annihilated by, right, right there, by the way. That was awful. <laughs> I'm not really doing very good on this character, am I? I'm really, I'm really not doing so well. Yeah, that's that's definitely interesting. Looking at old school RuneScape through a strategical or tactical lens, maybe like picking up on the more tactical aspects of the game that you don't notice, but you do anyway. Like, let's try and find an example. I'll carry this conversation into the next uh, the next game. That could be interesting. Cause you know, I love I love old school RuneScape. I've been playing it since I was literally in like second grade. When I was like, how old was I then? I don't know, whatever second grade age is, back in like 2005 or 2006 or whatever it was. Or, no, no, it was sooner than that, wasn't it? It had to be, I don't know, I've, I've been playing it for a really long time. Yeah, I did terribly. I died twice, only got 238 damage in. I took so much damage, 416. Surprisingly, Helio also took a ton, ton of damage. Yeah, I, I think it's just to make sure, like, not being familiar with this character and playstyle and, uh, just... And just not, you know, playing it well. I almost kind of want to just, like, hop on Lockwood so I can, like, show, like, No, look, wait, I'm not actually that terrible at this game. Give me a chance. That's not actually the case. Alright, game three. Probably my last game of this character ever. It is a really cool design, but I'm just not really feeling... I'm really feeling his power, his power level. When I say design, I mean almost entirely visual. <laughs> I feel like they didn't really go very far with the whole Kantan like katana samurai angle. I would have expected a little bit more, I think. Like, I think you should have had more like slashing kind of kind of an idea. Like he should have. I feel like it should have been more like Yas Like based on his visual design, I feel like he should he should play a little bit more like Yasuo. Like you have your old, instead of having a dash, or I mean, it can be a dash as well, but I mean, it should be like slashy, right? Not just like get there and then do one little slash, but like multiple slashes, right? I need multiple slashes for my samurai. And I feel like his, his, uh, his twin slash should be more like, um, like, uh, like he has a really long blade, right? It's a katana. Uh, as opposed to it, like, but he has like the same, the same melee range as like Kaigen or something like that. This seems weird to me. I feel like it, 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 they could really push the whole katana aspect of this guy. And maybe like his, instead of having just like a shield, right? Because you've done shields before like a million times. Maybe you can have some kind of like damage reduction or something like that. Okay, his, his, his range is a little bit further than Kaigen, but you get the idea. Uh, <laughs> I knew I was able to get two of those if I just aimed it correctly. Alright, so we're getting some nice damage on these two with my ability as well. And I did say I was going to try and elaborate on the whole runescape angle with the tactical aspect, but I don't actually have anything in mind. <laughs> if, I, if I do come up with something, then I'll try and I'll make a video around it, but until then, I'll just leave runescape. It's the thing I play. Uh, like uber casually, like I, like as in <laughs> when I say play, it's only it's only partially true. As is you know with RuneScape, and of course this is with the caveat it's old school RuneScape, not RuneScape three. I wouldn't be caught dead playing RuneScape three. Maybe you can just like go over like a boss tactic. But not necessarily just a boss tactic, because obviously there are tons of guides on YouTube. I don't want to make a guide. I want to examine the the strategy that is formulated, cognizant or not. Right? So not just, you know, you go to Jad and then you switch prayers when you see something happen, right? More than that. Like, like when you go to, uh, like recently I was going to Dagonos, right? Uh, I was killing Dagonos, not the Rex Prime or whatever, just the regular Dagonos. And what's interesting is that people will bring a cannon, right? Uh, I mean, that's pretty obvious. It's a multi-area, lots of enemies, you bring a cannon. But the neat thing is, it's not just to get quick kills. It's also to be able to AFK it. Because once you have the cannon up, you only need to check back every... 
let's say, uh, just off the top of my head, like every minute instead of every 15 seconds or something like that. Because instead of manually clicking each unit you want to kill just by attacking normally with like a whip or whatever, right? And you use the cannon, you set it down in the middle, and you stand there and you put on your protection prayer, and you just, uh, you have all the Dagonauts that are on you constantly. And you just kind of, you can blow through the 170 kill count in a significantly shorter amount of time. True, it's more expensive because one, you use a cannon, two, you're probably using prayer pots. Uh, it's maybe a little, not uh, entirely efficient because there's so many Dagonauts and your cannon hitting so many of them, so maybe it takes a little bit, it can be a little bit inconsistent in, regard, uh, inconsistent in regard to the kill count, and this could also be ruined if you are going up against, I mean, not going up against, if you're around a lot of people, because they could just be like minnows around a shark that kind of steal your kills. Or something like that. But see, that's kind of like the thing that you don't really... You don't think, oh, I need to, I mean, I guess you kind of do. I was going to say, you don't really think that you need, you bring a cannon just so you can AFK, but they kind of, you kind of do, but you kind of use it for faster experience. But in, in doing so, it's just like, it turns into this really weird, uh, like melting pot of positives at the cost of, you know, a cost of gold. But if I, yeah, that's kind of like what the video would be more about. Not necessarily like a guide on how to do something, but why something is done. Why it happens. And in something like uh, PvP, which I think would probably be like the biggest, uh, like the like the idea I have the most solid idea for, or at least I think I'd have the most solid idea for. Like not just how you execute an enemy like let's say you're in like free to play using a uh, 2h uh and a short bow or something like that you use the short bow and you keep you hit hit, hit 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 until you get them relatively low and then you like right before your next arrow goes off when they're just low enough you use the dragon uh not dragon 2h but the 2h sword and then you go and hit for like 15 or something right uh something relatively high and then you execute them before they have a chance to heal up it can be really difficult to to pull off and you learn to how it happens but why do you do it you do it specifically because they don't you don't want to give them an opportunity to heal when they get too low you do it so you get the the high damage off the dragon 2h sword and also you time it in such a way that you're uh right before your arrow goes off right before your next you know uh pid or whatever it is attack goes off then you're using the the 2h sword because it's least expected i suppose if you use you hit it with the arrow as opposed if you hit with the arrow and then you switch right to the 2H sword and then you're sitting there for like a second and a half, right? And then you finally hit with the really slow attack and your opponent has all this time to actually uh, to eat, to kind of plan out the strategy, to figure out what they want to do next. So it's a mixture of like really fast reaction and also really good timing that's based both in experience and know-how, which I find really interesting. I'm not like, I, I'm not at all a PvP player. Like I'm in the literally over 10 years that I've played RuneScape, I've spent less than five hours and like actual pvp combat that it's never ever interested me but i think it, it could be interesting to see the more uh to see kind of the thought process behind those those particular tactics a more obvious example oh well there's actually two people in there that's actually not good i thought there was only one I guess because she warped, I didn't, I didn't see it, and I'm also gonna keep- I may actually die here. Wow, <laughs> there's so many people here! I thought there was literally only one, and now there's three in front of me. And I, I don't have a shield up or anything. I get- I do get a ni pretty nice hit off. Ouch. At least I'm still alive. I can get one really good hit off here. I don't know, Titus said. Okay, yeah, I can get one really good hit off. Oh, I can get one pretty good hit off here. No, I can't reach both of them. Okay, this is bad. I have to change the strategy. So maybe I do something like this. Uh, this is really annoying. Oh, that's really, really... Lock in, lock in, why can't I lock in? It didn't let me lock in, what the hell? 
Wait, do you move after this? Oh, okay. You move after it. That's what I missed. Okay, so he dashed anyway. I probably wasn't going to hit him no matter what I did. And now they both know that I'm here, right? No, it's no actually they don't. They don't know where I am right now. Good shit. Uh, just to finish that thought off and to kind of put the RuneScape thing to rest at long last. Why am I talking so much about RuneScape and playing Atlas Reactor? Uh, to put the last to it to, to rest. Um, uh, the mo like one of the most obvious and most flashy plays in PvP combat is to use the Armadil God Sword after getting your opponent low with something like darts or something like that, or just, you know a whip or whatever. So you get them low, you get them to like sub fifty HP. And then you use your Armadil God Sword to get off like... Oh, they did know I was there. At least one of them did. I hope I don't die here. I still need to be able to use that ult without falling. Uh, yeah, the most obvious combo is to use the Armadil God Sword once your opponent's sub 50. Because the Armadil God Sword does actually hit for that high of HP. And that's why it's like the... like, It's probably the number one PvP item in the, in the whole game. Yeah, it's the number one PvP item in the whole game because it has those like that ridiculous uh, execution power, and you can do it twice because I believe it only takes up fifty percent of the spec bar. So, and also, oh, that that's actually not one hundred percent true. This number one PvP item because there's actually a second one. That's the Granite Maul. The Granite Maul does the two very rapid uh, hit with the the uh, she dashed with the 25% uh, of the spec bar. So what you would do is you do the Armadil God Sword and then in the span of like a fraction of uh, a fraction of a game tick, you would do the two hits off on the the OBS uh, on the Obby Maul. So you'd you do the huge damage to the Armadil God Sword and then you'd follow up with the two really quick hits to the Obby Maul. And that's like a ridiculously powerful combo. Like that's a 100-0 kind of combo that you can do with 100% of your spec bar. Now you don't always do with uh, do increase your chances you get them a little bit lower but and the thing is you need to do it really quickly or else your opponent most likely knows that that's going to happen and they're going to heal up and get out of it uh so i need to get just get out of here no actually she's going to heal me i'll just use this no i didn't get to use it because i don't have any more bar My only time bank i mean that's unfortunate uh i was just going to heal anyway it's not that big a deal And also, I've kind of been thinking about getting into player on Battleground as well, which I think it'd be... I don't want to, like, again, I don't want to just do what everyone else is already doing. Like, I don't want to make guides because people are already making guides on player on Unknown Battleground and RuneScape. And also, my expertise is probably not at the level where I could do that anyway. Uh, but I, I'd like to be able to take, like, a more, like, a step-back approach to those games and try and figure out the tactics that, that are present in it and i think players unknown battlegrounds would be not only interesting because you know i get to play the game which has been such a hot hit and i haven't played any of it at all uh but also i'd be able to come to into it with a bit of a fresh perspective both on that game in particular and battle royale games because i played like next to none of it i mean like five years ago i used to play <laughs> i used to play like battle royale like minecraft <laughs> on the xbox that's like that's how limited my battle royale experience is and you know i've watched like 100 great <laughs> What's like a game? So my experience is obviously pretty up there. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see like why for someone who's come fresh to the idea, the concept is like, uh, why do you like these quote unquote obvious things that happen, happen? And how did like, how did it come about? Um, just from my very, very limited experience in watching some like of giant bombs player on Battlegrounds content and what they talk about. Like, uh, I feel like a common tactic is to, or not necessarily common, but a tactic is to um, stay just on the edge of the circle when it's closing in. I, I could be completely wrong, but I feel like that was something they talked about before. And you would stay, you would not be in the open fields, right? You would stay as as in cover or as hidden as possible. And then again, that like seems obvious. If you played those games before, it's like it's like breathing, right? You just kind of do it by default. But if someone who doesn't know what know what that game is about and how you win and how it works, you don't necessarily learn those things. And you like, you maybe like within moments you do get it, but 
there's still that initial learning process that you have to go through to be able to, you know, catch up quickly. And another thing could be like, again, another super obvious thing, like obviously not using a shotgun in an open field and using a long range, not using a long range, uh, you know, sniper or scope, uh, assault rifle indoors because it's going to be less effective than like a shotgun. And it's like, yeah, of course, that's, of course, that's what you do. Again, it's like breathing. You just do this by default. You don't think about it, but there's, a, those are things that you still have to register that you have to input that data at least once so i think that'd be interesting so there, there's definitely some ideas to, to uh to explore in that kind of area Four turns remaining. but there, i also had to run into like the problem like i'm not necessarily trying to do those videos to get views or to get popular but just to, because i think uh just because i think it'd be interesting content And content that I want to do, which is a pretty big deal. Because uh, it should come as no surprise what I've been kind of... Uh, not necessarily getting bored of, but just kind of like... feel like I'm getting to the point of... Not enjoying Gwent as much as I used to. At least for now. I feel like I just need... Like, I want to give it some time before I... <laughs> uh... I don't know. Like I said in those VOD review videos that I've been having diminishing returns on, you know, coming up with new ideas for VOD reviews and all that. And also, like, I was hoping the coaching thing would take off a little bit more and I'd kind of, like, get me more into it, but that's not really happening either. And I get the idea that it's not really happening for really anyone. And that's that's a kind of thing that I don't... It's not that I feel like the market's not there or that, like, it's never going to be there. It's that Gwent is still in the stage where it's not necessarily in the... Um, the stage of massive player growth and it's possible that it just needs to go into full release and then it you know it hits its stride but it still it still needs some time before it actually uh revs up a bit more and until then i think i'm just gonna not necessarily take a break but just kind of uh, move it down the priority list just a little bit and maybe like the VOD reviews will only be like once or twice a week instead of every other day, like I said I would. But it's definitely not going to be. What am I doing here? But it's definitely not going to be like a smite tactic situation in which I kind of take a break and then quit. Uh, I know Gwent is like, maybe it's I'm being a bit too <laughs> over optimistic or whatever. I feel like uh, Gwent is like a decade long kind of game that's going to be around for a really long time. Not to the extent of Hearthstone, because uh, Hearthstone, you know, is a bit of a unique kind of situation. Uh, but I feel like Gwent's going to be long around for a long time, so I'm definitely going to be sticking with it. Wow. Well. <laughs> Final turn. And also, Atlas Reactor, that's happening <laughs> in the background, which I've barely been paying attention to because I've just been talking. Which is nice, though. I kind of like this. Although, I don't know if Atlas Reactor is necessarily the correct game to to do this. Because Atlas Reactor does take a bit more, like, tactical... A more tactical mindset and kind of... Like, concentration... Uh, con <laughs> concentration? Uh, concentration and focus. Which I'm not really giving it what it needs. Although I did do a lot better with uh, Tolra in this game. I've only died once so far. No, no knockdown, uh, no takedowns, but my damage is fairly high. Maybe not. No, I'm still doing. I'm still playing like garbage. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, I'll just do something like this. Maybe aim it around there a little bit. Why am I doing so much damage? Why am I doing 35, 38 damage? Doesn't this, doesn't this ability usually only do like 20, 25 ish? Damn, I'm not going to be able to get him. I didn't expect him to dash that way, like he did. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so I do not have. I have two dashes. Okay.
Okay, I think this is my best option right there. I dash through him, and I do the damage. I don't believe he has any more taunts left. Uh, not taunts, uh, dashes. He do actually, he has his warp left, so he's actually probably gonna get out of there. Assuming he actually goes for the warp, which I would if I was him. That's gonna be quite the little battle, battleground, isn't it? Wait, they didn't do the damage to him? Or does it proc later? I feel like it's done that before, where it doesn't do the damage immediately. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. That's so weird that it does it like that. Where it doesn't proc the damage until the very end. I wonder if that actually has, like, uh, ramifications in some way. Okay, so what do we do here? What do we do? I think I'd just try and go over here and try and catch him. Maybe aim it. I don't know. I don't I don't know what to do there. He's like he has his warp, so he's gonna use the warp, right? When you're that low, there's no way you don't use it, right? He didn't use his warp again. Why doesn't he warp? <laughs> oh no, I was wrong. No, oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on, we can do it. No, it's not gonna happen. She's gonna die. No. The opposing toll run definitely has this warp, right? I can't see it from here. Wait, he didn't have it? I thought he had it. I looked I hovered over his character and it still had it. Weird. Yeah, I, don't, I, I thought he had his warp. I could have sworn I hovered over it and he had it. Maybe he like misclicked or something and he used his warp but he didn't actually go anywhere. Weird. Okay, so we basically lose. We need to go for the kill here. Oh uh, no, you're gonna get three of us are gonna die all at once. Oh man, so we, okay, so we have three people that are gonna die. And we're gonna kill two. It's it's just not gonna happen. Damn. Oh well. Yep, that's kind of figure what I ha what I figured would happen. Oh well, that was a much much better game than uh, than before. Not, I mean, I didn't do much better, but in general, I mean. Oh, you can GG multiple times in a single game. What? I could have sworn I used like two to three GGs there. That's weird. Alright, so yeah, that's probably my last game of Tolren. Not that I dislike this guy or anything, it's just I'm not really feeling this kit. It like both doesn't feel very powerful. Like, like Kaigen plays it like almost kind of in a similar fashion. And I'm just playing this guy and I just kept thinking like, why am I not just playing Kaigen? Also, I feel like this guy doesn't really have any synergy within his kit. Like a, a lot of different classes will have that. Uh, like again going back to Kaigen like Kaigen if you get like a, a, a mark off on somebody and then you hit it with your melee It does explodes it does more damage. I don't believe this guy had anything like that, which is kind of unfortunate. He just had like uh, a boring shield I could be wrong though. I didn't really look at the abilities too closely a boring shield a fairly standard melee Which I think is like not utilizing its full potential of the of the design space and then he had basically just throw dagger like from Titus or whatever. Uh, it had a cool effect. It kind of like slide, it kind of slide, turned, rotates, which is really cool. But the actual power within it, just, 
lacking. And then the dash itself was just kind of weak. I mean, the uh, both the dash and the and the ult, both of them just seem not necessarily underpowered, but just un not impressive. Uh, what's uh, there's a better word for it? Underwhelming. They're just under this kit just feels underwhelming, both in the design space and in power. And I just think it like it's too bad because I really love the samurai look. It's really cool looking, like this like neo, uh, like neo Tokyo samurai dude looks cool. But yeah, I just don't really care for his kit at all. Died twice. Wow, we had a lot of three. We had a lot of deaths in this game, and four nineteen damage. Like next to nothing against the last. I barely did a bit more damage than our our support. I didn't even take as much damage as our tank either. Although I probably shouldn't be taking that much damage anyway. Anyway, that's it. That was that was an experience. Uh, I'm probably gonna play the archer chick next. I'll do a session of that. Anyway, thanks for watching.